Hi guys, Baker here. Finally got around to do the guide on my CI split arrow, which show you how I move around the passive tree, what gems I'm using, and of course the gear I have. Plus, at the end of the video, I'm doing a 74 gorge map where you can see the clearing speed and how my character performs in solo play. So if you have any further questions, there's a link to the forum post in the description where you can see the passive, the bandit rewards, the gear and everything you want to know. Or you can come to my stream and ask me at any time. I hope you guys enjoy the video and see you guys soon. So here you see my level 93 uh, CI split arrow witch. Um, this character is really brilliant at killing huge packs of mobs since you have like six arrows from split arrow and it, they chain two times and you basically kill everything in one shot if you get the right bow and damage um, passives. So uh, let's talk about some gems first. Like we're using on a frenzy for the single target uh, and to build up our frenzy charges. Um, with added fire, increased critical damage projectile fizz damage and faster attacks at the moment. Um, in big groups where all the damage auras are ran, like Wrath, Anger and Hatred, um, you should probably swap out increased crit damage for increased critical strikes, which also brings us to our sixth link. Like all those six together would be a sixth link. Um, for now, let's keep it in. Um, it really depends on your uh, on how you can deal with reflect. Like if, it, like if it's getting too much, you should swap in a critical strike chance instead of crit damage. Um, on our split arrow, we have um, chain, faster attacks, increased crit damage, power charge on crit to build up our power chargers, um, and added fire. On reflect maps, like if fizz reflect is really a problem for you and you cannot uh, keep up your granites all the time, you should probably swap in um, life leech in there. And on half region maps, especially if you're a ranger, like as a witch I don't have that problem, I can basically sustain half region maps even with a six link without problems, but as a ranger you would swap in uh, reduced mana. Okay, then we have our auras, which is grace, uh, discipline, a link to reduced mana and I have a curse critical weakness which is the strongest curse for our build like if you curse it on mobs especially in solo play you can basically one shot everything and two shot rares. Um, then we're using enfeeble just to get some defensive curses as well um, it's not really needed but I, I like to have my, my curses here always on every character and Cast when damage taken with Enduring Cry and Immortal Call. This is pretty good to mitigate Fizz damage or Fizz Reflect actually because um, once you shoot into a pack and you didn't see the aura, uh, Immortal Call pops and gives you a little heads up of hey there's Reflect you know and you can adjust your shooting to that. Um, also Cast when damage taken always goes clockwise so uh, for example if I would put it here uh, my Enduring Cry wouldn't be affected by it and it would just call uh, Immortal Call. Um, that's why I have it up here. Also you could swap Enduring Cry for Immortal Call. Um, on this character we won't do that though because if we stand in a mob, in a big pack of mobs and cast when damage taken props, it first hits off the Enduring Cry so we build up some charges and then you get the Immortal Call and you get the increased duration from it. Um, further, we're using Blood Rage, which is really important because we get 10% uh, physical life leech, which is insane with our wall pact. And um, we have it linked to increased duration, basically. That's the most important. Faster casting and reduced mana are just fillers at the moment. They're not really needed since you basically, if you're soloing, you definitely don't have to recast Blood Rage ever because uh, every time you kill something with Blood Rage, it gets restarted and you also get frenzy charges on kill, so you wouldn't have to recast it in the map. Let's talk about the gear. You can check out my whole gear set in the forum thread below, but let's talk about some basic affixes you want to roll on your items. First of all, you want to get as high as possible energy shield on every single piece of gear you have. Since you can't wear a shield, it's really important for you to get it on other pieces. Further, you want to get as much damage as possible. Flat physical, 
flat um, elemental, crit multiplier, crit chance, everything would boost your damage a lot. So keep that in mind and try to acquire as much as possible of that. Further, you will need at least some accuracy on a, like one or two pieces to boost your chance to hit above 85%. Another really important part about this build is the Oxium. You will want to wear an Oxium because it gives you really high energy shield, gives you weapon elemental damage, some mana and the best affix is chill and freeze duration is based off your energy shield which means you don't have to use a dream fragments and can free up a ring slot for some more damage plus you won't be frozen all the time. Further the best in slot weapon for this build would be an harbinger bow because harbinger bows have the implicit mod of critical strike chance which goes up to 50% and would boost your base crit chance, which is 5% on bows, up to 7.5%. And if you roll crit chance as an affix on top of that, you would be at 9% crit chance. So keep that in mind and try to roll a really good Harbinger bow. I started out using a Lionized Glare though, um, because it has high physical damage, high attack speed, mana, and your hits can't be evaded, which is on one side is good, on the other side, it's really a big downside to this build because every time you hit reflect, it will be reflected to you and you have to mitigate it with a granite flask. So keep that in mind when you use a lionized glare and your DPS becomes really high. Most important passives in this tree, like the biggest nodes are CI, which reduces your life to one, but you're immune to chaos damage, which benefits our blood rage. So we don't get a degen or anything and just get the benefits from it. Um, you'll get as many ES nodes as you can and you'll get all the power charges you can that are close. Uh, further, we're taking some mana buff nodes, influence and mana reservation nodes. They really help you. Uh, Ghost Reaver is important to make life leech apply to your energy instead of life. Um, further, you're trying to get the energy shield nodes here with the, combined with the evasion because we're an evasion based character. Hence, we're using Under Skyle in this build, um, which makes us double the chance to evade our own reflect damage. This is pretty huge for, for this build, because first of all, you have the granites to evade reflect or to, to mitigate it, and you have Under Skyle to chance uh, to evade most of it. Also, you have Vault Pack, so in case you get hit by reflect or uh, anything, you can leech up instantly by shooting into any pack or any monster. Um, it's quite a big loss to go to Volpact, but the comparison, like DPS is so high that without Volpact, it wouldn't make sense to save all those points and put them into more damage because then you would just one shot yourself. Yeah, that's basically it. You pick up the Fizz damage nodes, all the crit multiplier there is and the crit strike nodes like here. One of the most important crit strike nodes is Deadly Draw. It gives you 16% fizz damage, 16 crit chance and 50 multiplier. This is an insane node. You have to have it if you're playing this type of character. Let's see how my character performs in solo maps. As you see I'm trying to kill most of the monsters with my split arrow and barely use my frenzy. Especially on reflect maps you should swap out your crit multiplier for critical strike chance on frenzy and maybe even swap out added fire for life leech. On double reflect however you should never use your single target attack and just use split arrow even on single monsters. As you see with critical weakness you can basically one shot mobs. This is the most impressive curse for this build since it adds a lot of crit chance and a lot of critical multiplier. Also if you look closely most of the monsters are ignited and shock stacked. This is cause I'm having some lightning damage on my gear and the added fire gem of course. In groups however if someone is running wrath, anger or hatred, you will 
definitely shock stack, ignite and freeze most of the monsters. You can even freeze rare monsters with your single target or lower level bosses. You should also take care of screening monsters because they might have a reflect aura. Should be always aware and pop your granite in the right time. Let's see how the character performs against physical reflect. Basically my immortal call goes off first and afterwards I'll pop my granite instantly. <laughs> 